this. Let's do a three dot. And this is f of x. Yeah, make it four dots. We have to do this today. Is there any points? I'll give you coordinates for them. Graph um, of f of x. That's a graph of f of x. So maybe negative six, negative three. Um, negative four. Yeah, so that's three five. down, that's five. Negative four, five? Yeah. That's good. Um, this that one? would be six. Six. Um, six. Six, six. six. Okay. Six point five. Six point five. Uh, and then. Make that just seven. Make it a whole number. Okay. Seven. Eight. Eight. Okay. Now, if you're just graphing an inverse function given a graph, I highly suggest you at least find three points on it. I don't care what the graph is. Make up the points if you have to, if it doesn't show any coordinate system. So just generalize like we did with these, general coordinates, and then the trick will work. And the only thing you need to do to graph the inverse function is take each one of these coordinates and flip them. The domain becomes a range, a range becomes a domain. So negative 6, 3 becomes negative 3, negative 6, someplace down here. Uh, negative 3, negative 6. Negative 4, 5 becomes? 5, and five. five negative 4, someplace over here. It's not going to be perfect, but oh well. 6, 6 is going to go? It's going to be 6, 6. six. It's going to stay right there. And then 7, 8 becomes? 8, eight, eight 7, someplace over here. Oh, okay. So you get a graph that looks like this. And that's its inverse? And that would be the inverse function. So this picture, the blue part, is f inverse of x. This comes in handy when we do inverses of strange restricted functions and we want to be really careful with the domain and range of it. Um, all the concept of just switching the domain and range comes into play. Now, I love this one on a test because I'll ask something silly like this. And I'll have this graph. And I'll say, find me the inverse of this graph. So this is f of x. So the best thing to do is to come up with reasonable coordinates. First off, what would be a reasonable coordinate of our asymptote here? This is called a vertical asymptote. The graph is never, ever going to cross it. Two. X equals negative 2? Okay. So if we let that be x equals negative 2. If we find its inverse, this is going to get flipped also. So instead of x equals negative 2, my inverse is going to have? Y equals negative 2. Y equals negative 2. So you get this dotted line down here. And that's the horizontal. And it turns into a horizontal asymptote that you do not cross. Asymptote. 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 Then come up with some reasonable coordinates. This would be a good one. Zero, one, negative, negative one zero. zero. Negative one zero? Yeah, that works. Um, maybe up here? Some, uh, five, four. seven. Five, seven, sure. Doesn't have to be perfect, as long as you get the general idea of what shape is coming out of this. All right, so we flip negative one zero, and that becomes? Zero, zero negative one, one. Which is right about here. Yeah. And we flip five, seven, and that becomes? Seven, five. Seven, five, which is over here. And the other thing you have to worry about is this. There's a line going right down the middle of this graph. And so what I happens is the graph reflects over that line. So what was pointing this way turns around and points that way. opposite. So this concavity is going to get flipped around. So our line is going to be approaching this thing as it goes to negative. So it's going to be coming along here. It's got to hit this point. And it has to hit this point. And it goes up. So the black one would be uh, f inverse of x. So that's the best way to deal with it. Treat them as hor uh, if there's asymptotes in there, the asymptotes go from vertical to horizontal, and you stay pretty much on the same side of them. Where this one's staying on the positive x side, this one's going to stay on the positive y, y side, and so forth and so forth. So that's how you graph an inverse function. That's the end of inverse, I think. Well, actually, one small little piece. Just a small piece.
I kind of started it yesterday, but I never finished it. It's this idea. If I have some function evaluated at x is equal to 17, how do you solve for x? Oh, as if you get a hint. And f of x is 1 to 1. Would it be negative 17? No. Nope. But I told you it was 1 to 1. What's that force it to have? It has to have, inverse. It has to have an inverse. inverse. Which so maybe it's y. What happens x. if I run f inverse into f? f oh, it equals x. x. They kind of cancel out, right? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the inverse function to both sides. It's totally legal. Whatever you do to the left, you do the same thing to the right. <sighs> this technically only works if you have one-to-one -one functions. So what goes in this side? No. F of x. What goes on this side? Uh, 17. 17. When f inverse runs into f of x, the answer pops out as? x. x is equal to f, f inverse of 17. I said that. I oh, said, it was, I said it was x. Oh, I know that. I want the answer. The answer is f inverse of 17. I got x by itself. So its solution is the inverse function evaluated at 17. The problem is, I have no idea what that is, plus I have no idea what that is. But this, uh, this method allows me to solve for x. I'm very confused. I know. When we get to chapter 4, this is what we're going to do over and over and over again. I don't want to. Oh. Or is it chapter 3? 4. I, have One okay. I think it's 3. Is that like saying like f of g of x is equal to x? Uh -huh. Is that... That because the, they're inverse functions. Yeah, okay. um, you do do this uh, when you deal with the square root of x is equal to eight. Square root of x is equal to eight. What is the inverse function of square root of x? Square. So you take both sides and you compose it with the square function, and you get x is equal to sixty-four. But that's a composition of functions, and they're inverse functions to begin with. What's that thing about the eight? Square? That's a two. That's, yeah. That's a two. It's my quick hand two. Quick hand two. All right, next section. Real easy. Um, section one nine, you should be able to sleep your way through the homework. Oh, really? Awesome. Seriously. So that means you should not get any of the questions wrong in one nine on the test. On the quiz? And the quiz. Zero wrong. What would you do if we did? Uh, <laughs> I'll be very mad. Uh, one nine. <laughs> distance. Midpoint. Oh, yeah. Circles. Uh, distance, distance, midpoint, and circles. No, it's not. If you are in a coordinate plane, and this coordinate oh. is x1, y1. This point over here is x2, y2. There are any two given points in a plane. Coordinate plane. Coordinate plane. And I want to find the distance between these two points. Now don't think slope. Slope between those two points is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But I want the distance between them. Because you cannot just go diagonally and find distances like you do on a number line. Kind of reverse a little bit. What is the distance between 2 and 10? 8. 8. What is the distance between negative 5 and 7? 12. 12. 12. 12. Right. What's the one way to do both of them exactly the same? Subtract. You subtract them and? Like if you subtract this, you get 2 minus 10 is equal to negative 8. Yeah, you have to flip like Oh, and you make the sign positive. You make the sign positive. If you know which one's bigger, yeah, sure. But if I don't everything. tell you, you make the sign positive. Yeah, but how? You multiply everything you multiply by, by negative one. one. Always? No. Yes. No. So, <laughs> no, not all no. the time. So, what is the thing that makes everything positive? The opposite reciprocal. Absolute value. Absolute value. Oh. So you take the absolute value of this, and you get the absolute value of negative eight, which is better known as eight, and negative five minus seven's absolute value is better known as. 12. So the formula is the absolute value of the difference of the coordinates. 
But this only works on a number line, which is either vertical in our case or horizontal. horizontal. So what's the thing for that one? What, that? No. Oh, this? No. We're getting there. So since there's only horizontal and vertical motions that you can make, I can do those two lines. What's that create? Triangle. triangle. We'll kind a of triangle. squared plus b right. squared right. equals c squared. We get into the Pythagorean theorem. But to use that, I need to know this distance. And you can do that. So how far is that? Um, I don't know. X to x. Absolute value of x1. Absolute value of x1. Subtract x2. And then the distance along this side? Y2 minus y1 absolute value. Y2 minus y1 absolute value. Ugh, I hate that notation. Why? It takes too much space. So what's another notation for the x2 minus x1? Thing. The triangle thing. This is known as the absolute value of delta x. Delta, that's it. Oh, no, no, no. This one here is the absolute value of delta y. Delta, y. <laughs> delta or change in y. Now change <laughs> just means subtract. Now notice this one was x1 minus x2. I, I wrote down exactly what you said. And this one is y2 minus y1. Does that change anything? No, it's no, the same thing. Absolute way. value fixes that. So it doesn't, it's irrelevant which way you do it. Now, if this is Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean theorem states c squared, well, the formula is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. B squared. I know, someone's going to say it's a squared plus b squared, c squared. Which one is the most important side? C. Which is the hypotenuse. So put that first, and there we, you don't screw up putting things into a and b. All right, in this case, we're going to call this side D for distance. So it becomes D squared is equal to the square root of, oh, no, 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 no. too far. I'm doing like three steps in my head. Yeah. And oh, we only need one, yeah. Uh, undo. Why is it undoing? There it goes. All right. So D squared equals a squared plus b squared, which is the change in x absolute value all squared plus the change in absolute value or, yeah, of y squared. The absolute value of change in y squared. Change in y all squared. Whew. One reason I love delta x and delta y is you get rid of this huge ugly notation which would have to go in parentheses and gets all nasty. Why does it have to go in parentheses? Because to write it you'd have to write you don't have to. I guess you don't have to, but no. I generally do. I don't know why. Okay, what does the absolute value do to a number? It, it makes positive. it positive. Makes it positive. If you square any number, it makes it, it makes positive. positive. It makes it positive. Do I have to make this number positive twice? No. Which one can I get rid of without changing the answer? The absolute value. The absolute value. So this turns into the distance squared is equal to change in x all squared plus change in y all squared. Okay. And then take the square root. So you go distance is equal to the square root of change in x squared plus change in y squared. Or, or if you want the long change in x. The long one is this. x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. Yeah, that's what I learned. I know. This is so much shorter. No, that's so much more confusing. I know, but you got to get your set notation if you ever take calculus, because delta y and delta x rule everything. Or physics. Or physics. Ugh. Change in something is extremely important. So this bad is distance. So, for example, find uh, distance between. Oh, negative 3, 8, and 4, negative 1. <sighs> the reason I don't like this formula is when I was doing these, there's this one and the midpoint formula, and they're slightly different. Yeah. Um, I always got confused about where to put the minus. Mm -hmm. So when I wrote it this way, I understood that this was subtract the x's, this is subtract the y's, and then worry about just squaring them. So my style is this. Find delta x. Well, delta x is negative 3 minus... 4. So delta x is equal to negative 3 minus 4, better known as negative 7. And delta y is 8 minus negative 1, which is 8 plus 1, which is 9. So when I got to the distance, it would be the square root of 7 squared plus 9 squared. I dropped the negative. You just went so fast. Oh. 
Negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. Okay. 8 minus a negative 1 is 9. Okay. And then just drop the negatives. You don't need it because you're going to square it. So 7 squared is 49. Plus That's 81. 49 plus 81. 30. What is it? Go on. Sam, just Shut give me a second. Okay? I can say that to you. 81 is 9 squared. Yes, ma'am. That's 49. 90 plus 4. It's, yeah. It's a 130. Thank you. Right. So the distance is equal to the square root of 130. Should you leave it like that? Oh, no, no, you should simplify mm -hmm. it yes. as far as you can. It doesn't simplify. Does it not? Uh, 10 times 13, yeah. which is 2 times 5 That's times 13. That's a good point. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Some people but yes, you should, that. you should simplify it. You should simplify it if you can. <laughs> So that's the distance formula. No big deal. Midpoint formula. Small proof. Small, somewhat proof. Remember geometry? Nope. Yes. They're, they're making a geometry club now. Are they? Yeah. They're called the mathletes. The mathletes, yeah. They wanted me to join that when I was in high school. Me too. That's another word for uh, exactly. <laughs> what your join? I was not a nerd. Yes. Yes. I am yes. <laughs> I was never a nerd. You took all five classes. Yes, you could. Yes, but I couldn't do anything else. Are we doing midpoint now? Yeah. So, what is the definition of midpoint? The point in between. Two. Oh, the point oh, in between two, a line. The point in the center of a line. The center. The center of a line or a segment. Wow, oh, that's so bad. Ge I thought you said you liked geometry. I do like geometry. I don't remember <laughs> well, the exact definition. I despise the definition. The midpoint is the midpoint of <laughs> the middle. Of uh, line segment AB is M if and only if AM is congruent to MB. What? Oh, that makes sense. Gee. So that's the pure definition, by geometry, of what it means to be a midpoint. If I'm M, sorry, I if you have A, so a M is congruent to M, B, then those two line segments are considered to be congruent. And if M happens to be in between A and B, it becomes known as a midpoint. midpoint. Okay, I got you. So, all line segments have a midpoint, so let's start with that. Here's M. That's not the middle. And it's, that is, that's not the oh, middle. Oh, fine, fine, fine. That, that's a little bit I'll make it a lot bigger so it'll cover the entire area. So if this is the midpoint, then this line segment must be congruent to that line segment. So I'll put those little dashes in there. All right, next step. Drop, oops, wrong color. Drop some perpendiculars. So draw this line in, draw this line in, and I'm gonna draw this one in solid. No. No, you, made two you didn't have to do that. No, yes. you made two triangles. Now, when I draw this out, how many triangles did I make? Two. two. And here's the third one. Well, at least the two I'm and interested triangle. in. You mean in a rectangle? Yeah. <laughs> rectangle's important, though. Rectangle's important. Okay, is it, ready? Is it in this case important? Yeah, actually, it is. If this is x1, what's the coordinate of this x coordinate here? X, x, x1, x3. Right? No, if this is x1 and I'm x2, over y1. here, x3, x2, y1. this is x2 y1. down here. X2, y1. If this is x1, x1 y1, y2, y1, x1, y2, this would be x1, x1. y2. No. Yes. X2, y1. Well, you weren't answering her, so I figured that was wrong. No, no, I was trying to get to the point that if this is x1, this one's lying right under x2, so this is x2. I didn't really care about the y's just well, yet. Yeah, I'm only interested in the x's. I'm so confused. Oh. You're just confusing the This right. is x1, y1. This is x2, y1. This is y, x2, y2. What's the midpoint of this line segment on the bottom? Wait, why would it be x2? If this is x2... If this coordinate is x2, you drop straight down. If this x coordinate is x2. We got it now. Okay. <laughs> coordinate geometry. This has a midpoint. Now, it's not guaranteed to be underneath this one, but I'm going to force it to be. There's a little extra to the proof that forces this line segment to be connected to m, but I don't want to go through it. 
there is no guarantee that this point is directly underneath the midpoint. So That's basically great. what you do is you offset it and prove that it actually is, but I don't want to get through that. Okay, cool. What's the coordinate of that midpoint right there? Um, the middle of x1, y. How do you find the midpoint of a line segment? Uh, if you know that it's an. If this is 3 and this is 7, what's the coordinate of the midpoint? Oh, no, you do 3 plus 7 divided by 2. Okay, well, right. Go ahead, talk, talk, talk. Sorry, Bridget. Okay, you do x1 plus x2 divided by 2. Yeah. Good job, Bridget. X1 plus X2 all divided by 2, better known as average. Like if you have two tests to find their average, you have to divide by 2. Yeah. Alright, what's the Y coordinate of this one over here? It could be the mean two. Y1 plus Y2. Y1 plus Y2 over 2. Yeah. Now, to prove that this is, lines up perfectly with that end, we're going to do this. This angle down here, this one. Mm -hmm. And this angle here. They're congruent. Why? Because of because, this because I forget. It's yeah, I know. <laughs> Do you remember the name of the rule though? You have two parallel lines same, same cut same. by a transversal, and these two angles are equal. Because it's the same angle. No one knows the name of it. If those two are true, begins with a C. Congruent. Corresponding. Corresponding. <laughs> these are corresponding angles. These are called uh, these two here. These two are called. Which are uh, not adjacent, but um. All. Alter alter alternative. Period. Interior. Alternative interior. I got it. Alternative I said ulterior, but it's a. Ulterior, yeah. So, if we have these two angles are congruent and they both have right angles and they have these sides, you can use A, A, S, which takes you, this triangle is therefore then congruent to that triangle. Remember, congruent triangles? A, A, S, angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side, 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 side. side So, these two triangles are congruent. That means all their corresponding sides and angles are also congruent. And this side of this triangle. This side of this triangle is congruent to this side of that triangle, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And this is a rectangle. So this side is also congruent to that side. And this happens to be the coordinate of the midpoint. And right above it is M. Okay. Now, this side over here is congruent to this side over here. Huh? That's a corresponding side of the two triangles. Yeah, okay, and then force it across the rectangle. And that Why are becomes we doing the, all this? Because that forces this midpoint to be directly across from M. And it forces this midpoint to be directly across from M. Because I started with M being right there. Okay, can you just give us... Now, a where's the shortcut? There is yeah. no shortcut. Oh, shortcut says. The midpoint formula has yeah, an X coordinate that's what of... I <laughs> no, here's a shortcut. Fine, fine, fine. And the Y coordinate would be... Oh, yeah, it's really easy. Yeah, see, I just average of the x's, average of the y's. I want to prove I it like that you know how to prove it. Geometrically. I don't want to know how to prove You said you like geometry. It's too much. I love geometry. <laughs> <laughs> but will I ask you for the proof? Probably no. not. You probably will. No. <laughs> proofs. We do proofs in geometry. Yes. This is not pre-cal. This is pre-cal. So? Um, he'll still, still, still do it. He'll still do it. You have proofs to do with pre -cal. Don't make them on. Not, oh, I'm not. not, you know, statements, reasons type proofs, Good. but proofs. Proofs. All right, so if I ask you to find midpoint of negative 4, 8, and 3, negative 2, how do you find the midpoint between these two things? Um, it's going to be negative 4 plus 3. Negative 4 plus 3 divided by 2. Divided by 2. 8. 8 minus 2. 8 minus 2. Divided by 2. Divided by 2. One thing I love when people do is put an equal sign someplace in this formula. This formula has nothing to do with equal. So this is comma. 1 half 3. Negative 1 half. 3. 3. 3. 3. Yeah, yes. three. Okay. So, that gives us the distance formula. That gives us the midpoint formula. Now I'm going to use both of them oh, to do something well else. Oh, you to yep. More geometry. No. Okay, I have a question. Go for it. Um, didn't you say that 
That's where this one and the distance formula get you all messed up. That's why I like the de change it. What's the definition of a circle? Where <laughs> That's a good definition. Where the midpoint is, is the size of the circle and the circle is the same size as the midpoint. Or the center. Oh, the center. You're getting closer yeah. to it, yeah. So if you have a point in space it to generate a circle, the, um, the space around it. Everywhere. As long as like the segments are like equal from Look this to the other side. How would you draw a perfect circle? This, like this. <laughs> no, that's not how you draw a perfect circle. Get a can. Oh, no, you no, use can. a oh, compass. Not a projector. A compass. That measures angles. Oh. A compass. That compass. thing that goes like this. A compass. You stick one end in, it's called the center. And then you, just you give it a constant around. distance and wrap yeah. it around. Yeah. Definition of a circle is um, all points. Equal distant, distant from the center from a given point. Uh -oh. <laughs> there is one small problem with this definition so far. Because you can't if you do it in a circle and then you can no. Oh. If I have this point right here and I generate all the points that are equidistant from this point, what shape do I get? A sphere. A sphere. So how do I force this to be a circle? Two D. So on a, a plane. Put it in a plane. In a plane. We don't want to talk about Why spheres. Why confuse the crowd on me? It's a flat surface. Is a I board. know, but nobody ever tells me that. So when I want to go to Seriously. Up on Study Island. Study Island. <laughs> I hate that. Uh, Study Island. You invented that. I invented that. That's I invented the internet. You invented that. Yes, I am. Uh -huh. Filthy rich. Okay, so here's my given point. I'm going to call it HK. My given point in the plane, HK. I'm going to give it a certain distance away from it that I want to talk about. We're going to call that, obviously, R for radius. It's going to generate this point specifically out here called XY. How many of these xy's exist? Infinite. Infinite number of them. And they're all r units away from hk. So we're going to generate, let's see if I can draw it decently. Not too bad. A circle around hk. That's much better than I could have done. That's not too bad. So if this is the generation of the circle, and we're wrapping this radius around, generating all these possible x, y's, then all we have to do is use the distance formula. What was that? That's my little look at that r. So we're going to use the distance formula between x, y, and h, k. So the distance formula says distance is equal to the square root and the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. Well, one of the x is a, h, one of the y's is k, the other one is x and y. So this becomes, oh, I didn't want distance. D is now going to be called r for the radius. So this becomes r is equal to the square root of something squared plus something squared. What goes in the first one? X, um, x minus 8. x minus h would be the best order, so x minus h. What goes in the second one? Y minus, y minus K. K. Y minus K. And it's conventional to get rid of the square root. So after you get rid of the square root, you get this. X minus H all squared plus Y minus K all squared is equal to R squared. It doesn't make a difference. It just makes things harder later on. This is what's called conventional. And the reason it is... If this is x minus 2, if this is x minus 2, which way does the graph move? Down. Moves. Right two units. It's inside parentheses. It would be right two units. But if it's 2 minus x, then 
moving right two units isn't as obvious. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you remember parabolas when you, when you shifted them left and right? We could do the same thing with circles. Okay. What? 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 That's the other reason. I want to just pull those HKs right out of this. Uh -huh. And a radius of R. No, R. Radius of R. Because R. That's a radius of R. And the formula is R squared, but the radius is really R. So if this said 9, your radius would be? 3. So for instance, simple example. What is the center and radius of that circle? And I know it's a circle because it's x squared and y squared. One x squared and one y squared. So what's the center? Negative 3, Nine. 0. Negative 3, zero. 0. Why is it 0? Because this could be written as y minus 0, all squared. Yeah. Radius? Um, it's going to be 2. Can we write it down first? Square root. You didn't write it down? 2 on the square root. Oh, sorry. Square root is 20. 2 on the square root. Shh, shh, shh. Yeah, what? what? He said he's crippled. He's crippled. Now, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Slow down, Mary. I cannot remember. Okay, why? Did you call me Mary? Mary. Don't do that. I thought it's a Mary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All right. Why is the center of 3 zero? Because when we do a transformation on this, it's going to go 3 units to the left. left. If you want to think of it that way. The other way to think of it is here it's minus h, but we're just talking about h. So it's always going to be opposite signs. What does H stand for? It's just the coordinate H. HK. Okay. Whatever this point is, it's H. we just call it HK. Okay. Um, now when you get to the radius, I highly suggest you write this first. R squared is equal to 20. And then solve for R. So R is equal to? 2 on the square root of 5. 2 times the square root of 5. square root of 20. You can't write square root of 20. I'll take a point off. You gotta simplify your radicals. My favorite radical of unsimplification, square root of eight. A lot of people leave that on a test. Two squares of two. Why is that your favorite? Because people leave it as square root of eight. How about this one? Wouldn't it be two on the square root of four? Two on the square root of five. Or square root of twenty. Oh yeah. Is that mean just circle? Is that mean yeah, circle. Center? Circle. That's a shorthand notation for circle. This is a shorthand notation for delta or triangle, depending on if you're in change or not. Uh, maybe. Okay. Find the equation of a circle that has a diameter of AB where the endpoints are given. So, what do I need for the equation of a circle? Um, diameter circle. And the radius. I need a circle. The radius. I need a point a. called a midpoint. center, but in this case, midpoint. Um, and I need a radius. radius. So, break this up into two parts. You need a center and a radius out of the given information. Which one's easier? Center. Center. So if we go for the center, the center is just the midpoint. So the midpoint of these two coordinates. Negative 4 plus 2 over 2. Negative 4 plus 2? Negative 4 minus 2. Negative 4 minus 2 over 2. 3. It's just 3. 3 minus, er, plus. plus 
Seven. 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 I tell you, that distance formula will mess you up. It's average. Add them together, divide by two. So the center is going to be negative three, five. All right, so that becomes our center. Now you have two choices to find the radius. You can do the distance. Between what? Between one of those points in the center. That's one choice. So you can do the distance between A and the uh, center, or B in the center. That'll give you the direct answer. What's the second choice? Plug here. Plug here. Find the distance between A and B and cut it in half. Either one works perfectly fine. Sometimes this one's easier because this might turn out to be oh, yeah, 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 fractions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you, it might be wrong. Or it might be wrong. <laughs> At that's least you get half geometry, the problem right, right? That's what our teeth, that's what one of my teachers told us. Such a confident teacher. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't believe in that. I'm going to go from AB. So half the distance or uh, would be one half the square root of, what's the change in X? Change in x between negative. a and b. It so would we're be negative, it would be negative six. It would be negative six, right? Negative six? Yeah. yeah. No. Negative two. Negative two or positive two? One of the two. Negative, two. negative. negative four, four minus. Minus negative two, which is which negative. Is negative two. Just negative to a positive. Oh my middle. God, land <laughs> Yeah. Really. Okay. It's negative negative two. Two. It's either negative two or positive two. Does it matter? No, no because it's going to get squared eventually. Change in y. Three minus seven, negative four. Negative four or positive four, I can care less which one you write down. So this is, what, four, uh, 16, that becomes 20? Uh, yeah. No, yeah, that's 20. four, that's 16, that's 20. Square root of 20, we already said, was two, two squares two of two five. Two. Half of two squares of five is? Square root. It's just plain old square root of five. So the radius here is going to be square root of 5. All right. Now I need to write down the equation of my circle. So how does that start? Well, it starts off something squared plus something squared equals something squared. X plus 3. X plus 3. Y minus 5. Y minus 5. And then 5. And then 5. The negative 3 here turns into positive 3. The 5 here turns into? Negative 5, and you have to square this so it becomes 5. That's not hard, is it? Yeah. What? <laughs> what is that right there? Equation. This is the equation of the circle that has that as its diameter. X plus 3. Y minus 5. Skill check. Skill check. Skill check. I don't, the negative, the negative three, and then you Not even close. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're looking for a quiz. Because that means the end of class. Yeah, it means the end of class. But usually it's like, is class over with you? And you guys are like, is it quiz class? Kind of backwards. Do you see how the three is negative? Yeah, why don't you get the quiz at the beginning? Where does that five come from? The last five? Yeah. The radius is square root of 5, but this is r squared, so you have to square it. Oh, okay. You have to square it, so the radical goes away. Oh, so that's the original equation. This is the equation of the circle that has that in its diameter. So, so it is x minus yeah, h all squared know. plus y minus k all squared Which was equals the r squared. Looks like the original so equation, right? But then you plug it back in. Right? What do you mean? Yeah. I'm lost now. This just tells me two points on a diameter. That's all it tells me. Yeah. From this information, I can generate a unique circle. Yeah. That's, the equation. That's the equation of the circle that goes through those two points as a diameter. So in other words, if you drew this, maybe this would be AD. There would be this perfect circle that goes right through them, and that would be the center of the circle. Does that make sense? Okay. Now I messed up my picture. Oh well, I can clear it. What? It's not time. It's only two eighteen. Um, How many questions are on the quiz? Three. Three. Skill check.
What's the center and radius of this circle? Oh, oh. Five. Oh, yeah. Center. This radius. And radius. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> I'm telling you, that is the equation of a circle in really ugly standard form. Um, well, why don't you put it in really pretty standard? That's our job. So how do I put it in really pretty form? Well, you can calculate box together the x squared plus 6x take out the x, and then you can no, just just definitely do not pull. Oh, oh. No, I mean like you pull out an x, you're never ever going to get it look like x plus three all square. I'll go around and start yeah. with yeah. the problem. So I'll start off with your idea. Yeah. Get the okay. x's kind of together. Get the y's, together. Get the y's kind of together. Okay. And get the three on the other side. I'll give you that one. Okay. How do you take a polynomial that looks like x squared plus six x and force it to be a perfect square? You just do, do it. You <laughs> add a zero. Yeah. No. You complete the square. Anybody remember how to complete the square? No. Take half of the middle number, which is positive three in this case, and I always suggest you leave the positive three and just instead of just three. Take this number and square it. What's three squared? Nine. If I add 9 to the left-hand side of this equation, you have to add 9 to the other side. You come way over here and you add 9 to this side. Now, this piece right here turns into x, whatever this middle number is, plus 3, all squared. Do the same thing to the y. Half of negative, uh, negative 8 is? Um, negative 4, square it, 16. positive 16, if you add it to the left, you add, it right. add it over here. Now, this plus sign right here drops straight down, so this is a plus. This y squared minus 8y plus 16 becomes y... Oh, y minus... That half number drops right y in there. Minus y minus 4, all squared, is equal to 22? Yeah. Complete the square. You've had to have done this sometime in your life. Yeah. Which I remember yeah. doing. The quadratic formula comes right from this. I don't remember. I remember doing it. Oh. So, what's the center? Um, the center? Negative three. Negative, Negative three, three, four. four. Radius? The square root of 22. The square root of 22, which does not break down. Want to try one? Do that, you're going to do one anyways. I want to take a square. I know you do. <laughs> I never thought I'd say this first in my life. That's what I'm saying. It's kind of reverse psychology. Did you say that? I think they were. No. They've always been the same. Find me the center and radius. <laughs> Get you a note taker. Half the battle of college classes is keeping up with your professor. You mix them all up. Yes, I know. So <laughs> unmix them. <laughs> Don't do that. Scramble. <laughs> You have to find the center and the radius in there? Mm-hmm, center and radius. Give me the equation of the circle. Well, in standard form. Tomorrow's class is word problems. Notice when I organize mine, I give myself some space. Well, now I did that. Now you did that. Mm -hmm. Why didn't all of us do it so quickly? 
most common mistake is forgetting those two numbers at the end. Do you already know your answer? Oh, this is perfect. It is. Yeah, it is. It is. I need less. Let's see, this is x minus 5 all squared plus y plus 8 all squared is equal to 9. That's what 8 right now. What's the center? 5 negative 8. 5 negative 8 radius? 9. Got it. Carried away. Carried away. Carried away. Yay! Quiz. Your wish is my command. Yay. Most people are like, did you forget? <laughs> did you forget? You write after class. No, he doesn't write four plus. No, no.